Hi everyone, this is CPW. Uh, this is a little addendum to the uh, setting up a Forge development workspace from earlier on today. Uh, several people have been asking, how do I add the Forge tests? How do I add my own projects so that they're accessible in Forge? And I'm going to show you that right now. It's not very hard. We just need to do a couple of uh, small configurations to the project setup. So first of all, uh, we're going to go into the project structure and I'm going to explain to you how uh, IntelliJ arranges the project. So uh, what happens is, is that um, the project gets a, a master output path. Okay. And in this case, it's classes underneath the forge root. Uh, modules uh, will inherit a compiler output path. And if we look here, we can see what that is. Uh, it's going to be underneath this production forge main, test forge main. So the tests go into separate directories from the main output. Now, the way that FML looks up the code is that it will, it will uh, only look in the uh, directories that are in the class path. So if these directories are not in the class path, then FML will never see any mods that are in there. And of course, we are running with Forge main, and the only thing that's going to be in Forge main is Forge, obviously. So uh, we would need to add in this directory here for the Forge tests to show up, the Forge test mods. And similarly, for your own mods, which I'll show in a moment, uh, you'd need to add your own mod output directory into the class path. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go to uh, Forge main, because Forge main is the profile that the Forge client is running. If we go and look here, uh, the Forge client is using Forge main as the class path. And if we quickly run it, we can see that there's no mods in here. Quickly, he says, while it compiles Forge. And usually it only takes about 30 seconds. I'll have to put a little annotation over here saying silence. Okay, here we go. Forge is launching. It goes Forge. We can see it's probably going to construct almost no mods. Yeah, didn't do any mods. You didn't see any flying by there. And we can see we have three mods loaded. We have MCP, of course. We have Forge Mod Loader, because FML is great. And we have Minecraft Forge itself. Great. Now, what we need to do is we need to go to the project structure. We need to go to the Forge main. We go to the dependencies. And we're going to add a jar or directory, which is going to be that classes output. So we're going to go to Forge Test here. We're going to say OK. Now, important, uh, it's a good idea to mark this as not a compile time test, uh, compile time dependency, because it's not. It's only needed for the runtime. So we're only going to need it when we run. So now we can run. And should see a few more mods being constructed now. There you go, loads of mods. And that's all the test mods for Forge. And we can now see 25 mods are loaded. These are all of the different test debug mods for Forge. Very good. Now, second question. For those of you who wanted to know how to add their own mods into this environment so that you could debug them, uh, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to go to uh, check out from version control. I'm going to check out a mod of mine from version control. I'm going to check out simple retrogen because simple retrogen is cool. So specified directory. I'm going to put in the same parent directory as forges, which is in projects Minecraft Forge. So projects Minecraft. This is going to go into simple retrogen. And we're going to check it out. There it is. No, I'm not going to create an idea project because I want to add this as a module to this project. 
So there we go. I've done the checkout. Now I go to project structure and I add and import a module. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find simple retrogen and here's the build gradle from simple retrogen. I'm going to OK. Uh, same as before, when you're looking at the MDK, basically this is an identical setup. We're going to use default Gradle wrapper, create directory directories, and OK. It's going to do an initialization. It's not going to do all of the setup Forge, and we don't need to do that because, of course, we're in a Forge environment already. Forge is quite visibly available. So what you'll see is you'll see these empty libraries. That's where Forge would be, but it's not there at the moment. And Forge is down here. Not to worry, not a problem at all. Now, to make a simple retrogen, which is here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move them to their own uh, new top level group called simple retrogen because that way it's clean. And uh, now we go to the main and we're going to add a dependency, a module dependency on forge main because forge main is the main code of forge so now simple retrogen is connected to use forge and it's going to think about that a minute and it's going to try and do a little build okay that built so at this point, if we go into our source, main, Java, we can go into world retrogen, and we can see everything. If we uh, visit the mod, oh, it <laughs> decompiled it. OK, why are you decompiling it? You've probably got an ordering issue. Let's fix that. Project structure. OK, so yeah, it, uh, it has an ordering issue. We need to put Forge at the top of this guy. In fact, I think it's removed it. I don't know why. Yeah, it's removed it. Uh, OK, so we're going to add a module dependency on a Forge main. And it's a compile one, and it's going to go right at the top. Okay, so now we apply that. Okay, that. Ooh, now it's got an error. <laughs> yes, I suspect I've got some bugs in here that need to be fixed. <laughs> ah, yes, of course, this is now an I chunk generator. change that as well because that's it and uh, the generator is I need to fix that too because I haven't actually updated this yet so I suspect that's wrong as well so I'll need to fix that but we can look at that later uh, the main point of this is that uh, as you can see, <laughs> uh, simple retrogen was being compiled against Forge. This Forge, Forge 1.9. And, uh, and so it obviously needed to be fixed. Now, once we've done this, we do a rebuild of the entire project. This is always a good idea when you do this. Uh, it's going to rebuild the entirety of Forge. And uh, once it's uh, done that, it'll also rebuild our, our mod, simple retrogen. And finally, we do the same trick we've done with the tests to uh, add in simple retrogen as a new mod. Uh, 
Okay, great. So now then let's go to the project structure and we're going to go to the forge main class here and we are going to go and add so we can see the forge test is still here so we're going to add a jar directory and we're going to go to the classes production and we see simple retrogen main here which will contain my mod simple retrogen main okay that and we're going to change that to a runtime and apply and okay and now let's run forge Of course, it's my error because of uh, the fact that Simple Retrogen has just been updated to 1.9. But hopefully it'll be all right. So far, so good. Okay, we can see 26 mods loaded. If we go and look in the list, Simple Retrogen, hello. And that's how you do that. Have fun, everybody.